Shalom, shalom. Greetings to you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, wherever you are. It's a blessed day that the Father has granted us, and we are always going to rejoice. One, because it's our home, it's our life, it's our state of being, uh, discovering that we are not out of God, but in God, and that changes everything. Like I keep on saying, I found out that we do not know a happy God. And imagine, do you know how much you can be transformed if you discovered a happy God? Could it be that the reason why people are not happy, especially those who believe in God, is because they have not known Him as a happy God? We should begin from the right beginnings if we want to flow well. If you got it wrong from the beginning, then it's going to be hard. In fact, we'll continue a hard way discovering, thinking rather, that this is the way. But the way is one. It is discovering God and a happy one. And I'm telling you that God has no problem with being happy. Only men have that problem. Okay, you find it in the scriptures, especially those who discovered it. We read Paul writing to this church, Philippian church, and he said in verse 4, chapter 4, verse 4, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. I introduced this a little bit. Now, I want to talk, talk more about it. You know, when the man says rejoice in the Lord always, again, I will, I will say rejoice. It's like a conclusion is coming, he's concluding. Now, there are some factors that we have to raise here. Like I said, first and foremost, he was in jail at the moment when he was writing. So it seemed that there were no circumstances supporting him to rejoice. And uh, he was also in not... Um, accepted everywhere because he was uh, revealing teaching the gospel and some people were fighting the gospel it's not only that he was in jail but also what was going on around it wasn't easy if you want the circumstances were so hard at the moment very complicated um in this time it was also a time of persecution um paul was in this it was in this period of time the Pope was preaching the gospel around but with all that said he still he still reveals us something very profound he says if you don't know this you might think that these people were crying day and night these people were so miserable but this if that is what people think is a wrong perception, something else was happening, was taking place here. And you know what? Christ Jesus, who is our life, the moment you understand the meaning of being in him, then you have found the source of joy. And that joy does not go away because that's something permanent. There's nothing that comes from God that is temporal. Everything that comes from God is eternal. So what we see here is that rejoicing in the Lord always is Paul's conclusion. If you want, it was one of the secret weapons he had, or that is his state of living or being. Once you say, Rejoice in the Lord. It will make some sense because people think, okay, you can rejoice in the Lord sometimes. And if there are some circumstances that are speaking otherwise, you just what? Stand up and and, and, and and probably change the mood and so on and so forth. Well, Paul adds a word and that word makes it very, very unique. He says, always. And the word always, you understand, is always. It means consistently every day. And always also will mean um, morning, evening. It will mean whether something has gone this way or something has happened this way or something is on your, you think it's fighting for you or it's against you. This is always. Now, 
this is so now that's why i keep on thinking when i look at such uh, revelations a believer who does not understand where this man is standing spiritually speaking you might take this for granted or you might miss out what he's talking about this is so deep and i can bait few people few men that who have worked with god understand this because they do normally not understand do not understand that it is possible to walk with god while rejoicing all the time they will keep on seeing and saying you know the the challenges well yeah there are challenges all these things are there but there's something about the joy that you get from Christ now this is what i'm they, listen to this this is what i've discovered you know in the the natural joy the natural joy can come because of certain happenings and won't last that much that long in it doesn't have that much power and I will explain in a moment the power what I mean by it doesn't have much power when you are happy and all of a sudden you hear you know something contrary you know you know as people say there are ups and downs the experience of the joy you had in the moment will just vanish away and you will switch into another mood of uh, sorrow and sadness and so you are found there in agony mourning and crying and so on and so forth whatever you're doing and then when it changes you also come you again come back and rejoice a little bit and that's the life that people live in now let me explain to you how this joy works because i know how it works when paul says rejoice in the lord always is so powerful it's so deep when the joy of god has grasped you has grabbed you has taken over your life this is what happened happens if that joy takes over your entire being for instance and you are jo- rejoicing in that joy something happens to your soul and something happens to your spirit and something happens to your body that it leaves a certain mark oh it lasts so long it sticks with you it doesn't go away and number 2 it heals every past you know negative experiences are erased by the presence of this joy of god this rejo- this joy that comes from god so that is what i mean by the natural joy does not have power the spiritual joy this joy from god has power in that it removes it erases the scars of the past experiences that were so bitter that were so negative that were so uh so bad and when this joy er- erases them when it wipes them away then you even go back in the past and trying to remember what you went through you feel like it's no longer part of your journey it's like it's no longer part of your experiences that you went through this is the power of joy you feel like it's no longer something that happened to you. you know it happened but again there's this disconnection between what happened and what you are experiencing now and if you are to to give a report you will say you know what <laughs> i have been walking in joy and joy, joy imagine this drop of joy it makes you it raises like i said it takes away all the sorrows all that is taken away because this joy is from heaven you see what i mean now he says rejoice in the lord always now imagine if i have a consistent experience of rejoicing in the lord for a month for a year 
Do you know if you're rejoicing in the Lord, if you only knew what he's talking about here and you rejoice in the Lord probably for in a year, that would mean you need a hundred, like a thousand years to make you forget what you have experienced in that joy with that joy from God. It, it, it is it's amazing. This is what I have experienced. That the moment the joy of God takes over your life, you look in the past and if somebody was to ask what were the challenge you went through, well, you might talk about those challenges, but the truth is you kind of, you no longer for remember. It's like everything has been so sweet and so smooth. And that's the reality and that's the experience. Oh, glory to God. The experience of rejoicing in the Lord. So rejoice in the Lord always. It's so powerful. It says, again, I will say rejoice. So if Paul, for instance, was in, in this prison and he was experiencing the joy of the Lord, he never remembered everything he went through and what and what. In fact, they became like nothing compared to the joy that was experiencing you see now that doesn't mean that somebody doesn't go through some challenges you know here and there but they are so little they mean nothing you you understand by comparing now i'm saying nothing comparing to the greatness of joy or when you're rejoicing so this is then the power of rejoicing in the lord always you see what i mean this is marvelous this is amazing he says, again, I will say rejoice. He understands you people. If you rejoice, you will not be narrating stories that you know. You don't know what we went through. You don't know our struggles. You don't know. Our, and, after, and you won't be. Now, there's a, there's a scripture which says, and he wipe away our tears. He wipe away our tears. And how does God that, does that? How? What do you think? He uses his joy. And if the joy, you know, if the tears are gone, what replaces tears? Joy. So his joy has more power to wipe away all your tears. Can you imagine? And that's what we have to experience. Shalom, shalom.